Hey everybody. Long time no video. <laughs> uh, sorry for the delay on not putting up any video since we got back from the YouTube gang bash in uh, May. But uh, as y'all know, I'm HVAC guy and the heat around here has been brutal. And we have just been covered up with work. Uh, not had a whole lot of time to do anything in the shop. Uh, trying to work on air conditioners, uh, keep everything at work running. Plus, all my friends and family are all the time saying, hey, my AC doesn't work, can you come by here and help me? So, uh, I'm probably getting back to doing some stuff in the shop a little bit. Uh, going by Greg Porter's Welda, Weld Every Living Day in August. I've not welded every day, but I've had a couple projects come and go. I had one where we did a utility trailer, and unfortunately, I didn't get any pictures or any video of it. We took the axle out of a 98 Dodge Caravan, the rear one, cut it down in width. Uh, matter of fact, it's, uh, hang on a second, this is a piece of the uh, tubing that we took out of it. We had to take eight inches out of the center section of it, then uh, V it and weld it all back together. And uh, we put uh, the Dodge Caravan wheels on it, put lights on it, new decking, had to weld all the framework and stuff up. So I've been welding on that thing probably for three weeks. And then uh, I've been doing a little foray into uh, forging. We wanted to uh, start making knives. So I took this decrypt, or defunct, sorry, lack, lack of grammar there, uh, grill unit that I had down here that a friend gave me, which ironically enough is a twin to the one I still use at home, and we took the, uh, the grill housing off of it, all the baffles and the burners and stuff were just burnt up. So what we did was, took the top off, and I'm cutting out this plate, kind of hard to see, I got all this stuff laying here, it's the smaller of the two plates here in the center, which is going to lay over the top. And this is going to be the fire pot. Uh, I got some of this off of uh, watching some of the guys on YouTube build theirs. Uh, I've got all this stuff packed together for the uh, actual pot itself. Hold on a second, the battery light's blinking. Let me change the batteries and I'll bring you guys right back. Stand by. Okay, fresh batteries installed. Anyway, I cut all these pieces out at an angle. I've got them uh, tack welded now. They're not welded into the, the uh, base plate or the top plate just yet. And I just finished uh, cutting out the bottom of it. And this is going to have a uh, four inch hole cut out in it for the uh, airflow to go up through it and also for the clinkers to fall down through it whenever the charcoal burns down. And I've been cutting all this stuff out with my handy dandy little uh, eBay plasma cutter. I've had this thing for like three years now and I'll tell you what, uh, I can't complain a bit. All I've had to do is just replace the consumables on the end of it, the uh, little ceramic end and the tip on the edge of it there, but I mean this goes through this stuff, it's 3 16 like, you know, a butter, through, or a knife through butter. But anyway, that's kind of what's going on around here, uh, trying to keep everything running as per usual this time of year. Uh, you probably hear the lawnmower in the background, my uncle's out there cutting my grass. We had to replace the blades on my lawnmower, he was over there next to uh, the edge of the yard and got into something and ran over a connecting rod and a piston out of something and I have no idea where it came from. Of course, hit the Swiss cheese, the blades. I'm trying to think of where I put those things. Oh, here they are. I mean, it just, uh, yeah, they're not supposed to look like that. <laughs> but it was about time for new blades anyway. You can tell these were getting pretty thin. They hadn't been changed and the mower's about five years old. So I was due for another set and I think a set of two of these was like 20 bucks. So I really can't complain. Anyway, that's uh, kind of what's going on around here. I'm just trying to keep everything running, try to stay cool when possible. I mean, it's been like, you know, 95, 96 here. Not as bad as some of the folks further south than we are, like uh, Matthew Bucks Woodshop and, uh, you know, down toward uh, central Georgia. I mean, he's just been getting smoked down there. It's super hot. You know, Darren in Florida, you know, I can't really... I can't complain, you know, being with the temperature that we are. So, uh, so I guess I'm going to uh, get off of here. I really don't see any point showing you guys me welding because you really can't see anything. But that's what I'm trying to do welding project-wise. I wish I'd have got some footage of that trailer though. That thing actually turned out pretty nice. We cleaned it all up, ground it down, painted everything with rust oleum, put some new five-quarter deck boards in. I mean, the thing looks like brand new when we got it done. We even uh, cleaned and. Uh, repainted the wheels, so I put a new tongue in it, new hitch, new lights, I mean, essentially it's a new trailer. Uh, so he's pretty happy with it, and I guess uh, I'll get off here, get some more work done, and I'll try to put this video up tonight. Hope you all try and stay cool, and take care. See you on the next one.
Okay, this is on to day two of the forge build. I got the uh, plates all tacked together and most of the uh, final welding on the back side of it done. That's a three and a half inch pipe coming up from underneath with a three inch pipe teed into the side of it. That'll be where the uh, airflow goes in. Then on the bottom there is a uh, flapper door. Uh, let's see what I did with it here. That gets bolted onto it and it will actually have a spring that holds it tight and the lever sticks out toward the front so I can take my foot raise it up and that will drop the uh, clinkers uh, down through here. I also took a piece off of an old barbecue, well, actually the same one that this came from, to make a grate to set in the bottom here and uh, should be able to take a hook or something and clear those pretty easily. I think I'm just going to put a couple of small tacks to hold that in place for moving around. That way if I have to get it back out for some reason I'll just take a pry bar and stick under it and break it loose. But uh, overall I'm real happy with how it turned out. This is about, uh, I don't know, four hours worth of welding. Weld it, uh, grind it, weld it, grind it, weld it, grind it. <laughs> I'm not a very good welder, but I'm a pretty good grinder, so I guess it all works out. Uh, I don't have any more to set the camera, and I can't find my tripod in this mess. Uh, let me turn you off and uh, flip this thing over where you see the underneath of it. I'll bring you back in just a sec. Okay, I got it flipped over, and I went ahead and loosely uh, stuck the uh, flapper or damper, whatever you want to call that, on there. It'll seal off most of the air from uh, coming out the bottom. I'm not figured what I'm going to put here yet. I've got two or three different little small blowers from what I've looked at on YouTube videos and from what I've read in some of the uh, forging books it says you want a large volume of air but not particularly a high pressure air because you want it to flow up through the coal evenly which is kind of why this was designed like this from another gentleman that was on YouTube this is kind of the diagram he came out with his was 8 by 10 I actually made this one 10 inches wide and 12 inches long because that kind of works for the size of the uh, top of the barbecue grill. But I've got uh, all this welded up around the sides, around the pipe, got all the corners of the uh, pot itself welded. And now I'm just working around the edges, uh, welding it to the top plate. I was doing it in small increments at a time so that I didn't warp that plate up too much. I'm not going to weld the top of this down to the grill. I'm just going to put like a a uh, sheet metal screw or something in each corner, that way if I have to take it out for repairs or to do anything else to it, it's not all one giant monolithic piece. But, uh, like I said, I'm uh, using uh, flux core wire, which is why it's got all this splatter and stuff on there. There's a lot of cleanup involved. At some point, when I get good enough with that, maybe I can uh, progress to, to TIG weld and everything, but this is just so much faster and I had uh, two 10-pound spools of wire, so trying to get this thing all put together so we can actually get started uh, with some charcoal and I'm sorry not charcoal regular coal and see how much uh, metal we can make a havoc out of <laughs> but anyway that's uh, kind of what's going on here uh, trying to keep everything together and trying to get this thing done so we can uh, start forging a little bit it's still really hot and I'm not wanting to uh, do too much of this when it's you know, 90 plus degrees outside, but if I get it done now and then kind of push it over out of the way and work on some of the other projects, uh, working on uh, redoing my back deck at the house, uh, putting some posts up that were rotted off and putting the roof over the top of it. I had to replace some of the boards that we had to cut out to get the post replaced. Um, you know how it is when it's summertime, you got all these, uh, these to do projects and you're trying to get it done before winter gets here. So I'll quit boring you guys. I appreciate everybody watching. Y'all take care. I'll see you on the next one. Okay, this is about another hour and a half worth of cutting, fitting, <laughs> hammering, grinding, a uh, few unnice words. But uh, I had a bunch of this uh, angle iron scrap from a uh, water heater that I tore out a couple of years ago. I've been sitting outside. It just so happened it happened to be the uh, correct height for the shelf that I wanted to put around the outside of this for the to hold the excess coal before it goes down into the forge. I still got one more piece. 
this one wasn't long enough, unfortunately, to go all the way around. So I've got a miter cut there. I got to come down and do a miter cut here, and then come over here, ten and three quarter inches, and then that should be it. I'll leave it open in the front so that you've got direct access into the fire pot. But I've got to uh, get that other piece cut. So I got two miter cuts, and then on the end down here, I just do a uh, 45 back cut. So it's not got a sharp edge on it, and then I'll sand all that. Then it's all got to go over there into the blast cabinet to get all this surface rust off of it. I cleaned off just a little bit so I could mark where my miter cuts and stuff needed to go. And I've got this side fit pretty good. Of course, it's sprung out right now, and I'm not going to tack anything until I get it all cut, get it set in place and clamped just to make sure I don't have any issues. But uh, needless to say, it's been a long afternoon. I've been up here for about three hours trying to get all the stuff cut out. I, I probably look like I've been working in a coal mine. Dust off these grinder wheels and stuff is horrible. That's, that's why I got this thing on. It's about loaded up now. It's getting to the point I can't breathe. Of course, proper personal protective equipment. You know, dust mask, gloves, hearing protection, uh, stuff for your eyes. I mean, it's, it only takes one stray piece of stuff off that grinder wheel to take one of your eyeballs out. So try to always be careful. Man, I'm hot. <laughs> It's amazing to even stand here in front of the fan and the air conditioner, how uh, how warm you get, how sweaty. But anyway, that's kind of where I'm at at the point. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a whole lot done anymore this evening or not. It's 4.30 now, and I'll have to quit here pretty soon and go home for dinner. So I'll try and put this with the rest of it and upload it, or I may try and get it finished and upload it all. It's one video. I'm not sure. It just depends on how much footage I've got. So uh, I guess I'll... See y'all in the next one. Thanks. Take care. Well, that's got the top done. Got the bracket or the corral or fence or whatever you want to call it to hold the coal in place. So that way all you gotta do is just take and rake you some more over into the fire pot. Here's the piece for the uh, cover. Keep everything from running down. Got all this stuff. Uh, welded up. This and this aren't welded together. They're just going to be uh, a couple of screws. It's worked a little bit to hold it down to the top of the uh, grill frame. That way if I have to remove it or do anything for repairs go, I can take the screws out, pull both these pieces off, and fix whatever I need to to uh, go back on it. But the only thing left now is to put a spring here on the trap door down to like right here on the bottom somewhere just a light duty spring to hold that shut hook up the uh, air blower to it and it should be ready to start forging so uh, it's been a long day <laughs> had a three day weekend this week I had to take some vacation time and uh, get some stuff done today's Monday I'm going to try to put the video together for you and get it uploaded so that way you guys can kind of see what's going on sorry for the lack of videos lately it's been really busy but uh, I'll get it all put together, upload it, and hope y'all enjoy. Take care. See you later.